So I know you're probably getting sick of me making videos on Dell computers, but I'm going to make an exception or maybe two, depending on what happens in the future. My previous main laptop to the one I use right now, which is my MacBook Air and maybe on the occasion an Acer Aspire E15, it used to be a Dell Latitude E6530 with a Core i5-3230M CPU, a... It was a G, not even a GeForce, it was an NVIDIA NVS 5200M Quadro MXM graphics card. It had 12 gigs of RAM, had a cheapo 240 gig SSD in it, and it was just a basic 1366 by 768 LCD with no backlit keyboard. But it was a solid machine, I got it for a reasonable price, and it served me very well. But it was time to pretty much move on and you know, get a better machine. So that's where I got the Acer Aspire E15 from, which ultimately CPU wise is identical in performance, but the graphics are much better being that they're PCI Express Gen 3 and a 900 series GeForce with a uh, considerable lot more VRAM and performance. So anyways, so interestingly tonight, which tonight is the 12th of February as of the making of this video and I now have another Dell to join the laptop fleet. And what you won't believe is that this only cost me 20 bucks and an extra most bestest cheese pizza from Little Caesars. Let's hop into it and see what I got. So this is a Dell Latitude E6430. Very similar to that of my E6530, but just smaller. And in this case, way better spec. This came from my friend Chris, whom, of course, he got it from work because they were getting rid of this machine, I think, or something like that. So he took it home, which was really cool. And coincidentally, I got to see it tonight. I was at the making of this video. And I decided, what the heck, I'm going to buy it because it's a nice machine. And you'll soon see why. Spe uh, specifically, the uh, specifications of it are just wild for the price I bought this machine for, which I just mentioned was 20 bucks and a extra most bestest cheese pizza from Little Caesars. The top of the machine is in fairly good condition, just like my E6530. There's only really one tiny ding on the top. This one's over here, whereas mine was towards this side of the laptop, but either way, it has its signs of love, but honestly not nearly as badly scratched as my E6530 was, but there's definitely still some marks. I think a lot of this will come off though if I wipe it down, particularly this uh, permanent marker on the back where the aluminum is. This machine, like the specs are just incredible, but for those who haven't seen an E6430 before, let's go ahead and take a look at the IO so you get an idea as to what this machine has in store in case you're looking to buy one of these things, which if you get a nicely specced one like this, then I can see why, if, especially if you get it fairly reasonably priced on eBay or some secondhand shop. So on the front are your two speakers as well as your SD card slot. And this is really nothing too fancy, but anyways, we have three USB ports on the right hand side, two of which are 3.0, one is 2.0. This one is a charging port, which is nice. This one combines eSATA functionality. There's your wireless switch. This is a express card slot. And right here is the eBay, which currently has a battery in it. This would have probably shipped new either with the battery or the optical drive, which would be a DVD RW drive, nothing fancy, but still absolutely functional. On this corner, we have the HDMI 1.4 port, as well as a knockout plug for modem. This is probably one of Dell's last Latitude series machines to actually feature the knockout for modem, or if it was actually equipped with one, a RJ11 socket there, or RJ11 jack rather. There's also a Kensington security lock slot right next to that hinge screw. On the left hand side we have the power jack and the gigabit ethernet port. And finally on the left hand side we have one more USB 2 port, a VGA port with the screws, and one of those goofy headset jacks that I'm not a big fan of, but whatever, right? There's also the vent. There is a, a smart card reader. So if you have an organization like Enterprise that uses smart cards to secure the computers, there's your slot for that. And the hard drive goes right here. As the name distinctly identifies, the E6430 is a 14 inch business class laptop. So the display is 14 inches diagonally. And the 
30 part of it designates that this uses an Ivy Bridge or third gen Intel CPU. This one in particular is a four core, eight thread core i7, specifically the 3740QM at 2.7 gigahertz. This CPU is an absolute beast from its day and it still actually holds up surprisingly well today. And uh, I'm very glad to see that this actually has one of those CPUs in it. One of the best that you could equip one of these latitudes with. This also has the backlit keyboard, which really wasn't anything I needed or could care less about really, honestly. But it's nice to have anyway. It's also got the fingerprint reader, which my E6530 did not have, well, a functioning one anyway. And uh, this one does not have the webcam, which is fine because I don't care. It probably would have been a garbage webcam anyway, as these things were. And the display is also an upgraded panel. This does not have the base 1366 by 768 display. This has the nice 1600 by 900 LCD, which is very nice to see. And overall, like even inside of here, it's not all that worn, especially the touchpad, just very, very minute. And you can't even tell. It looks like it's brand new. Even the trackpad buttons look brand new. The keyboard, aside from just a minor discoloration from my skin oils from earlier, it looks brand new. This laptop seriously otherwise, other than that dent, looks brand new. It's just incredible, the condition that this machine is in. And the hinges are solid as these latitudes from the day were. There is absolutely no play in this, in this hinge at all. It's insane. So very, very nice condition machine. Of course, a couple of the catches to why this machine was as cheap as it was, mainly was no hard drive, which isn't that big of a deal. Cause honestly, I'd rather machines not come with a hard drive because that just increases data security. And secondly, I did not get it with a charger. But again, that's okay because I have a couple of Dell chargers lying around, so that's really not that big of a deal in the end, so that didn't bother me either. So despite like the $26 in total across both the cash I gave them and the pizza, yeah, it's still definitely undervalued by quite a bit in our honest opinion, but we like to wheel and deal quite a bit. So uh, Anyways, without further rambling, I guess, we'll go ahead and we'll turn this machine on. We'll actually enter the BIOS setup just to switch things up a little bit as per usual video routines. I usually don't, well, maybe I do do this, but you know how it is. Anyways, so just going to review the system information here. So this has eight gigs of RAM, dual channel, 1600 megahertz. I think it steals 64 megabytes of it for the Intel HD Graphics 4000. And as you can see, the Core i7-3740QM CPU at 2.7 gigahertz with six megs of level three cache. What an absolute beast of a CPU from its day. And currently I only have a 250 gig hard drive in it just because I had to borrow this from my Latitude D630. I don't really think this is that good of a drive anyway. So I don't know, I'm contemplating a cheap SSD for this. Uh, just like I was thinking about for my XPS, but more on that in a little bit. We'll have to see. This also has Bluetooth, which is nice. This one has the Broadcom wireless in it. So unfortunately, what that means is under Linux, the Wi-Fi doesn't work out of the box. You have to install a driver for it to work, but it works fine otherwise as soon as you install it. So not the big, not the biggest deal. I'm hoping that maybe um, Ubuntu 2004 LTS will fix that if you were to ever install Ubuntu derivatives on this. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to see. Speaking of Ubuntu, that is what this is running at the moment. The hard drive that I pulled out, like I mentioned, from the D630 already had the install of Ubuntu on the hard drive. So I haven't bothered to reformat it with Windows yet. So we'll just boot into that for the sake of demonstration, even though I don't believe there's going to be much we'll actually be able to demonstrate on this computer just because it's a clean install of Ubuntu 1910 because it didn't work on the D630, but it works on this machine, so go figure, right? <laughs> now, something interesting to note, because I mentioned I did have an E6530, which also had the exact same DGPU. Interestingly, this machine works perfectly under Ubuntu, whereas my E6530 had some really bizarre issues, like I didn't have the ability to change the screen brightness whenever the proprietary NVIDIA 435 series drivers were loaded, 
It would let me do it under Novo, but not when any of the proprietary drivers were loaded. And it also had some bizarre quirk and just some jarring behavior. It was really strange. I don't know what the deal was, but it seems like under this machine, it works perfectly. And that really speaks volumes because Generally, I've always had bad luck when it comes to NVIDIA graphics cards and Linux. Really not sure why that has been the case, but this machine seems to have solved all those quirks and works absolutely amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and log this in because it's going to get to the lock, uh, lock screen here. And then we'll see what we can do. Yeah, definitely the hard drive is the bottleneck of this computer. It's not exactly fast. It's a SATA 2 drive. That and it's not exactly in the best of health either. So the fact it still works is a bit of a miracle in and of itself, but anyways, I digress. So here we are at the desktop of Ubuntu 1910 Eon Airmine, just your typical clean install. I haven't really done much other than like install Discord and install the drivers needed to properly make this laptop function, particularly the Wi-Fi that needed to be installed. So let's head in here real quick, and uh, I'm not going to launch Discord because we know what that is, but... Interestingly, under the NVIDIA X server settings, this only has the options for switching the graphics around. I'm not sure if that's just something to do with the currently installed drivers being the NVIDIA 435 series drivers. Because as far as I'm aware, under Linux, I think the newest drivers that are officially supported by this uh, MXM GPU is the 390 series drivers. But for some reason, they give you the option to install 435 series drivers. Not really sure what the deal is, but whatever. I haven't bothered to try these NVIDIA 390 drivers. Or, uh, I know 340 works, but that's pretty old. So I'm not going to bother with that. And I know Novo works, because I had to do that to revive my XPS after a Linux meltdown today, which was not fun at all. So... I don't know if changing it to 390 will give me more options. I'm sure that it would. I'm just not going to keep Linux on this machine. I'm going to probably install Windows. And you can see the Linux driver I had to install for the wireless card to get it working. This has a Broadcom 43228. So I believe that may or may not be Hackintosh compatible, but I, I don't know. You have to comment down below. I'm not too good when it comes to Hackintosh stuff. Not like this would run it anyway because it's got an NVIDIA GPU, so not much less a Quadro, so obviously it's not going to work under Mac OS. So before you all come crying to me saying Hackintosh, just no, I'm not going to do that. And that's why I have my MacBook Air to begin with. But yeah, everything seems to work. Absolutely no flaws, and everything is buttery smooth. Like, this is probably one of the smoothest experiences I've had with Ubuntu in a long time, and... Honestly, I think the only time I've ever had a smoother experience was on my desktop with a much better Samsung SSD, although I've never really directly installed it on there. But uh, I've done it with like a hard drive. It works okay, but you know, it's, this is not the same. So uh, let's go browse the web for a hot minute here and we'll just see if we can find something to watch. Now, crazily enough, I tried listening to some music on this earlier and Surprise, surprise, because of the condition of this machine, the sound is not distorted. And that really blew my mind, because normally these machines, as far as their speakers are concerned, usually are fairly tinny. They like to reverberate around in the chassis because they're so worn out, or the machine itself is worn out, or whatever have you. But this machine, amazingly, just, it sounds good. Like, you turn it all the way up, and it doesn't distort. It doesn't vibrate the chassis. It's just simple loud sound and it's decent for an e6430 i wouldn't go out of my way to call it amazing but for what this machine is it's actually decent and that really blew my mind because these things are usually beat up if you look on ebay you'll see plenty of these machines that are just worn to hell in a handbasket but this thing basically survived it's crazy like this thing is basically pristine and that's just insane so you can also see here on this Firefox screen that there's no defects in this LCD whatsoever. The backlighting is even, it's bright, it's just good. And that's just, it's insane. So uh, yeah, I think we'll go load YouTube here. And yeah, definitely this thing is no slouch when it comes to browsing the internet. Because again, quad core, eight thread, i7, it's just yeah <laughs> it's insane 
So uh, we'll find a uh, video to watch here. I suppose we'll just throw something on that's not going to totally get me copyright slinged. Eh, maybe we'll go throw on Ashens. I don't think he'll really care too much if I use this video for like 15 seconds or something. Hello. Ah, the old mystery crates. They have left something of a hole in our lives where we used to be able to open them up and complain about what was in them. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that an enterprising viewer has decided to take on the mantle of provider of boxes. Well, at least once anyway. Yeah, that was all the way up. And these things are just clear. They're actually good sounding. It's just it's crazy for a business class machine like this to just have not seen that much wear. So I know it wasn't much of a demonstration. I do plan on trying some more stuff with this in the future, particularly when it comes to like games. We'll see what that crappy NVS 5200M will do nowadays. It stopped on driver version 415, I think when it's in Windows. So it actually had driver support for quite a while into 2019. So I definitely say if that driver installs that people with this kind of a machine got their money's worth, but I think it's capped at 390 on Windows for proper functionality. Don't quote me on that, but I'm going to experiment here on Linux. I'm going to see if 390 works. I think it should because that's what the uh, XPS of mine also stopped driver support on was driver 390. So I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm going to try this off camera. If it works the install, I don't care because I'm not keeping Linux on this machine in particular. So it's just for experimentation purposes. I know the Windows one will work for what its intents and purposes are going to be for. So anyways, that's it for this video, guys. That's a look at this Latitude E6430, which I got for very, very cheap, but screaming deal. And I love it. I love this machine. It gives me all the memories of that E6530, but it's just better in the spec department in every way almost. And this thing is in gorgeous shape. And for the moment anyway, I think I'm going to I'm going to hang on to this cuz this CPU, this very CPU is just a beast and it'll make daily tasks a breeze. So with that having been said, thank you all for watching. Do you expect maybe a video at least maybe on this machine in the near future. But until then, I'll see you all in the next one.